You're listening to Rise to Your Purpose, a personal and spiritual development podcast for female entrepreneurs with a mission. We are your hosts, Brandy and Natalie. Hey, we are back um, for Rise to Your Purpose podcast, and we are so excited today because we have Michelle Schaefer here. You guys, she is the founder and CEO of Girl Power Alliance, and her drive, like ours, is powered by Christ. And so this has just been like a divine group, you know, a divine meetup of how we got connected through social media um, and our passions and kind of purposes and really how we want to impact and how we want to help people like you that are that are listening and following like how we want to help you be able to create a larger impact in the world and and for the kingdom and so um we asked her to come on and to share with us more about girl power alliance but i have to let you know a little bit more about michelle and so she um she's a mom of three um she was actually a teen mom and a single mom for six years but she was able to build a six figure a year business as a stylist and makeup artist and then like us she got into um, the profession with network marketing um, and was super successful. She became a multiple six figure earner within her first nine months in the profession. She's earned multiple seven figures building teams and she is passionate about helping to build women, women's incomes and their leadership. Um, she's passionate about teaching and equipping women, equipping women to become the person God created them to be. And just she's passionate and she's a powerful speaker, which you'll get to hear from her today. Um, as she shares more with us about her vision with Girl Power Alliance and how she is continuing to really serve and show up um, to really meet the needs of other women in business, uh, she has gone on to create and generate millions in earnings. And we were talking, um, and I want her to dive into this too, of how she kind of got this call for the Girl Power Alliance. Um, she's done marketing um, and she's a field trainer. She and her husband actually founded their own company in 2010 where she served as a founder and president and she's widely known too for her popular podcast called sold out entrepreneur um it was in 2017 uh, and she just really knows and we've talked to you guys too about how god just put this call in our lives as christian women in business and network marketing that we really have to you know bring god and faith into our business and really help um continue to lead others in that way and so she um, continues to serve and empowers other women um, to follow and pursue their God-given dreams and be bold in their faith. So Michelle, welcome to our podcast. Thank you so much for taking the time out to join us today. Um, tell us a little bit more. I'm sure there are things that I, um, I know you're, you've authored books as well. I actually want to share those because these books might be great for you guys to go check out. Redefined turning adversity into your advantage, and then the residual life, building your network marketing empire. So those were published recently in 2019. Um, so lots of amazing things that you have done. Can you share with us a little bit more maybe about yourself and really how you got this call to Girl Power Alliance? Yeah, thank you. Thank, <clears throat> thank you for having me. Sorry, of course, I know that and I'm clearing my throat first, first go, but <laughs> <laughs> thank you for having me. I appreciate you guys. And I just want to say before I even get started, like kudos to you. Congratulations, congratulations to you for stepping up and stepping out and leading women in the way that you have for a number of years. I know that you're impacting lives and I just have to, I love social media because we, I found you Natalie on social media and, um, I was like, Ooh, who is this? I need to be friends with her. And then we had this awesome conversation. I was like, okay, we're like soul sisters. Everything yes. we're doing is so aligned. And so God's so good like that. I love it. Well, yes. um, really, I think that girl power Alliance, the foundation for what will be girl power Alliance when we officially launch in June. But, um, I think that God started birthing that years and years prior years and years prior. And so I'm sure that this part of your guys's mission, both of you girls is to empower women to be able to bring, um, their faith in boldly into their business. And, and kind of, how do you do that? Because, mm -hmm. you know, we're taught <laughs> you never talk about politics or religion, never in mixed company, especially not in your business. 
And so it was this thing that I felt like this call, this thing, this little knot in my stomach getting louder and louder over the years. And so in 2017, like you said, I launched um, my podcast called the Sold Out Entrepreneur Podcast. And in that podcast, I talked about everything, really, a lot of my network marketing business and how I built it to tips and stuff like that. But, you know, health and nutrition relationships. And, you know, God just said to me, if you could be unfiltered, if you weren't worried about offending anybody and you could be authentically holy you, what would it sound like? And so that's really what that podcast was. And I know now that, um, you know, God used that to kind of train me up and prep me for this bigger, this bigger vision and this bigger platform. And interestingly, I just recorded my very last, I closed out the sold out entrepreneur podcast and it was kind of a, I don't know, a bittersweet thing is I launched May 1st in 2017. And my last episode was, um, you know, the end of April, 2020. So um, I just felt like God was saying, okay, it's time to actually close that chapter and, and go give everything you've got to, to GPA. And so really my mission is very similar to yours. I want more women to feel more excited about sharing who they authentically are in Christ in every area of their life, including their business. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that gives me chills. I, I know. I had goosebumps as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so awesome. So you mentioned that you start, got your start in network marketing, and we actually serve a lot of women in this industry. So what would you say as some business advice that you can give to some of our listeners and viewers uh, for running their business today in 2020? Oh, well, if you would have asked me four months ago, it probably would have been different than what I'm saying now because this, the world has just, you know, mm -hmm. really dramatically yeah. shifted. And I think it's really interesting because the network marketing world has shifted mm -hmm. because there's so many people now at home going, oh my gosh, what am I actually going to do? Maybe my job isn't going to come back. And so you have people that maybe were product users and they just, you know, they were like, uh -uh, I'm never going to do this network marketing thing, mm -hmm. but I do like this product. So I'll buy this product from my girlfriend or friend or, you know, family member. But now they're like, well, shoot, maybe I should actually like take this serious. And so you're seeing in the network marketing space, like globally, the numbers are skyrocketing. Mm -hmm. I mean, people are signing up in record numbers. Their companies are having record weeks, record months right now for a multitude of reasons. Number one, because the supply chain, you know, kind of fell apart with traditional products and services, especially people that have either nutritional products or products that were in the like natural cleaning space. Those mm -hmm. just exploded over the last, I mean, everything has done well, but those specifically have exploded. So I would just say this, that if you are a network marketer and you're listening to this, now is not the time to be shy about what you do. But I, but there's two things that really have kind of turned me off during this time. I see braggy people bragging. Oh, I'm so happy that I made this decision all this time ago and look how much money I'm making and my life hasn't changed. That is harmful to people whose lives mm -hmm. have dramatically been impacted by the loss of jobs, the loss of income, the loss of a family member. So I, that turns me off, number one. And then um, the number two, the, the every post is a pitch. Mm -hmm. That is a turnoff to me personally in the network marketing world. And so, but what I, but what I love to see is people that are so authentically blessed by the fact that they have products that are still coming to their door every week, that they are still generating an income every week. And they're sharing that from a genuine place of, listen, maybe the timing wasn't right, but maybe it is now. And there is a stark difference to me. So I would just say, you know, really dig into all the things that you're so grateful for. And if you come from that space, that automatically like magnetizes people to you. Yeah. I, yeah, I love that. And Cause yeah, we have to be more sensitive to who we're speaking to, how we're speaking about it. But like you said, being able to come from that place of gratitude and if this, you know, this could be for you too, would love to, you know, share more with you, but yeah, being very, um, I think just, coming from a heart centered place. And when you do that, and I love what Bob Heilig says, he says, love, serve and grow and then you'll grow. So always just being intentional with your conversations and when you're posting, you know, how might the other person, you know, read that and how can you come from a place of, you know, of love for them. And, but also, like you said, not shying away from 
that you do have a business and you do have products or an opportunity that could really serve people and help others. So I love that. Um, and we mentioned how, um, you know, our, a big part of your business, our business, our movement is bringing God into the business world and the business space. So can you share with us a little bit more about how you've been able to bring your faith and in Christ into your business? What does that look like for you kind of on a, a daily basis, but also just how did you kind of start making that shift and have you seen kind of God showing up in your business and, and in this space? Yeah. It's interesting because like, I think specifically as a Christian, we have like Christianese, like there's specific terms that if you, if you hear somebody, maybe a stranger or something, use a term, a specific like vernacular terminology, you're like, Oh, they're a Christian. Cause that's like Christianese. We only, only Christians would say this thing, whatever that is. And so I think over the years in my, well, let, let me back up when we, when me and my husband, Bobby owned our network marketing company, we were very bold about our faith in, in, as the owners of the company, telling people that we were praying about this. We had, um, Isaiah 43 verse 18 and 19 on the, on every box and bottle, which was that. really, it was a really, I was so proud of that. Like, um, that was a big deal to me. Um, but we also knew that, um, and had experienced people that actually used their faith as a way to manipulate people like, Oh, we have to sign mm -hmm. up with that company. That's a Christian company. And not to say that there's anything wrong with being a Christian company, but again, there's this fine line between being authentically who you are and, and using it as a tool to manipulate. Mm -hmm. And I think that happens outside of network marketing too, like just right. in general, that, that in, in any space where, um, you have a community that has a certain belief system that people can be manipulated. So we were always very careful about that. Um, so I think that again, it's specific terminology, like talking about, um, you know, whether you were praying over things or stuff like that. So that's how we, me and my husband have both, uh, led in our network marketing business by using that specific terminology. Um, and over the years I would do these little side shoots, like, uh, an accountability group or something like that. And I would kind of let people know, okay, this is what I'm going to do, you know, within this accountability group, I'm going to be praying, or I'm going to be doing this so that, you know, if they, whether you shared my beliefs or not, you would know. And on a bigger scale, when I've done things or spoken at events or whatever, I always preface it with, you know, listen, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to share with you something um, uh, that is directly related to my faith. So if you don't share this faith, then, you know, you can plug your ears, like kind of like yeah. make a little joke about it, you know? Um, so, uh, but I will say that when I started the podcast in 2017, um, it shifted everything about how I spoke. So I was so scared to launch it because I was like, people in my business are going to really, they're going to think I'm one of those weird Jesus people. Like when they hear all this, how I really am, it's, I'm so filtered, you know, just in, in the, my everyday speak in my business. And I just went like all in, I dove like cannonballed into the podcast. And I was like, you know what? God's calling me to this. So if I lose people, then I lose people. And you know, I was just, I was so scared to, to actually launch it and go public on social media. And I have to tell you the exact opposite thing happened. So where I was so, uh, had adopted and partnered with this belief system that if people knew who I really was, and if they knew how much I really loved Jesus and how big of a part of my life he really was, they'd turn from me. They think I was weird, whatever. It was the exact opposite. And I actually found that people, they found me because they were looking for a Christian leader. And mm -hmm. so they found my random podcast and then they found me. And I found that it enabled relationships with people that maybe they were afraid to talk about their faith or maybe they wanted to deepen their faith. So everything that I thought would negatively happen, like the opposite happened. And so that was empowering to me now still being respectful, like of people that didn't share our faith. Cause our team is extraordinarily diverse and we have like everything. Um, but making it okay for whatever somebody believed. So you can't have it both ways. Like political correctness is about, you know, filtering what you say. So you don't offend people, but then it has to apply to you too. Like I, I should be able to say what I want to say without offending you. If I allow mm -hmm. you to say what you want to say without it offending me. Mm -hmm. And so I think that we've turned that switch off as Christians. We're like so careful not to say anything to upset anybody. But then if we stand up as a Christian, now we're oftentimes like we're the villain. And so I just decided I, 
I'm going to do what I do for you. I allow you to be wholly you, regardless of what you believe. And I'm going to be me and it's time for you to allow. And if you don't allow it, then you can go. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of how it evolved. I, yeah. okay. I love that. Um, I've been on my own journey of just like finding my truth, finding my identity, realigning my identity as a daughter of Christ and standing in that truth and be able to speak my truth. This past year, I've been on that journey myself. And so I love how you just were like, it's time to take the filters off and just go for it. And th I've had the same experience where I was finally sharing my truth and unapologet unapologetically sharing it more people became attracted to me and I attracted those other like-minded people to me. And, you know, you're going to repel the people who aren't meant to be in your tribe. And I think also just like praying that God protect you against those people that should be coming into your life and protect you against the people that are there to harm you and hurt you. And so I think that's awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, you, before you did mention a little bit more about your movement with Girl Power, Power Alliance, can you share more about like your vision behind it? And you said that God put this calling on your heart. So can you share about that purpose behind it and, and your mission? Yeah, thank you. I'm so excited. I mean, I've, I have loved kind of everything that I've done at the moment that I've done it. I've really loved it. When I was standing behind the chair, I loved that business. It was wonderful. When I moved into network marketing and for the last 15 years, I've, I, I still love network marketing. It's amazing. When I started podcasting, I love that. Well, I, um, it's funny that, Brandy, you talk about your identity. Around, right around the end of last summer, I, God really started to press on me again. It was, it was a similar pressing to when I felt like he wanted me to start that podcast, but it was, it felt way bigger. It felt he heavy. It wasn't this like, Ooh, something exciting is coming. Yeah. It was heavy. It felt, um, super scary. And God revealed to me that I had really allowed my identity to be wrapped wholly in who I was as a network marketer, yep, <laughs> who, I hear that. Who, who I was in my business. Um, who I was in my company, and I had kind of forgotten everything else. Now, don't don't forget, I've been podcasting this whole time, so like that wasn't in the like that wasn't in the mix at all, God. But apparently, it was not. And I think that even to the point of maybe making my identity in my network marketing business kind of an idol for me personally. Mm -hmm. And so I just was like, okay, God, I surrender it all to you. So I knew I didn't know what He was doing. I was like, is He calling me out? I just wrote a network marketing book. He's calling me out of network marketing. That's kind of messed up. But I didn't know. But I just wanted to make space for it. So I actually took a four month hiatus for my podcast. I kind of made space in my mind and my life to just mm -hmm. let Him, whatever. Okay, God. I mean, as I get older, I, I resist less, I still resist, but I resist less and I try to submit faster. So I just said, whatever it is that you want to do, God, I'm going to do it. Even if it scares a crap out of me, even if it makes me feel like I don't know who I am. And that is really where like the kind of tossing of the waves. I didn't know. I was like, okay, God, but if that's not who I am, who am I then? Mm -hmm. If I'm not this person, <laughs> right? I mean, even, uh, like if I'm not her, like who, who am I supposed to be? This is really scary. And so as I prayed, I spent a ton of time in prayer. I felt depression, sadness, excitement, fear, all these different things. God started to very, very slowly and gently because he's so careful with us. I mean, he's so careful with, you know, uh, the way that he allows us to evolve. Um, I started to get the, the, like these ideas. I was like, really, is that kind of what you're asking me to do? And so the first portion of the idea, well, okay. On December 31st, 2019, I felt something new. I felt a hopefulness and an excitement for 2020. Like, like maybe like I'd never felt before. And I was like, just watching the clock that night for it to click over. Literally, it felt like somebody flipped a switch. As soon as that year left me, I mean, it's like, you know, what is it? just minutes clicking on the talk, uh, ticking on the clock. But as soon as the, that year left me, I felt whole new energy. I was like, okay, God, something new it's coming. And so I started to get the, the beginnings of this idea that I wanted to create a resource and a space for women that we could gather and have community. And the veil behind it would be Christianity, these women of faith. 
And so I shared it with my husband being the, the good business partner that he is. He's like, yeah, you know, as long as you kind of keep that like in the background, so you attract everybody. And so the idea was growing, but there was this not, not in the pit in my stomach. And I was like, so am I not getting it? God, like, is this not the idea? Or I just, my, the Holy spirit, it was not aligned. Mm-hmm. And then I started to feel like, wait a minute. And I thought it in my mind. I didn't say it out loud. Finally, one day I said it out loud. I said it to my husband. I said, babe, I think God's asking me not to make it like a veil, but I think he's asking me literally to put it right in the forefront of what I do. And the moment I said it, even when I say it now, I got chills from head to toe and it was like blinders came off my eyes and I knew exactly. And the rest of the vision downloaded so fast. It was like some, he dumped it over me. And I knew for a fact that I was maybe for the first time in my life, wholly aligned in a direction that he was saying, run, run as fast as you can make this happen. And, you know, and so the vision is big. So it's a platform and a resource. We'll have, um, first of all, everybody involved, whether they're on a podcast, whether they're curating a course, um, whether they're like a blog contributor, where they're one of our coaches, every single person involved has to agree to our, I'm calling them statements of alignment. Um, I'm not calling them statements of faith because every single one of them, even though they have to do with faith, they're not all, all, every one of them is not all only about faith, but everyone there shares our passion, excitement, and love of Jesus and wanting to have an impact on the world, no matter what their profession is. So that's first and foremost, which I think is super exciting. Like that alone, forget, it doesn't matter what we're doing. We got that going. Um, but we'll have courses every month that we um, make available to our members. We have, to, um, we're going to have a social media vault just to make social media a little bit easier for people so they can just pull social media off of the site and use it for themselves. We'll have um, a member directory where you can connect with other women. We're going to have a coach's directory. This is, I feel very bit like this is important. We all at different times need coaches, but as a believer, if you align yourself with the coach, it doesn't matter what the, what the coaching is for. It could be financial, it could be marriage, it could be, it doesn't matter. If you align yourself with a coach that does not share your foundational beliefs, like you could get off track quick. Oh, yeah. So we'll have a whole directory of women that are coaches, that are believers, that, that our members can just access. That's huge. Um, we're going to have every single month, um, we're calling it Jesus at the mat. And so we'll offer this there it's healing yoga, literally like transformational yoga that we'll have available month to month, plus our community. Plus there's a lot of things, but that's what we'll launch with right there. That makes me so excited. Just, I feel like the Holy Spirit's in this conversation. I have had goosebumps this entire time. It's been awesome listening to you. And I fully understand your journey because I was in the same place, like almost the exact same timeline as you have. Like I had to just almost like prune. I went through this pruning stage of just like tearing away everything that was not me, just sitting in, in God's silence and leaning in to hear his whisper because he wasn't in the chaos around me. He was in my bubble bath moment of just like just me and him with some worship music playing. And that's when he finally was like, daughter, you're my daughter. Show up, love yourself, love people. That's, that's all I want you to do. (laughs) And it was just so amazing how you shared your story. I was just like, I, I just, I feel like I just gave you. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I get you. And you know what? It's so awesome. There are tens of thousands if not hundreds of thousands of women who've gone on the journey. And what I have found, I mean, here we are, we're, we're, all we've done is launch the podcast. Mm -hmm. Okay. We will launch on good Friday. We're officially launching all the rest of the stuff, hopefully June 1st. It's kind of in God's hands, but that's the goal. And, um, I can't tell you how many women they're thanking me. Nothing's even happened yet. Mm -hmm. And they're thanking me for what is because I believe that there's been this missing space in the world Mm -hmm. for us to come together like as a whole, not like Christian women in networking or Christian women in writing or Christian women in, you know, whatever. Like, I believe he's saying, let's, let's get, let's get you all in one big space. And what I have found is, um, I'm calling it supernatural synergy. There's something extraordinarily like superhero ish Mm -hmm. that happens when I know I feel it on this call with you girls. I'm feeling it right now. It's like, it's like, on alignment tangible like it's like tangible yes yes well let me tell you something every it makes me want to cry every podcast i've done with women this is what's happening 
-hmm. Imagine when we actually bring everybody together. This is just us one-on-one. And so I feel so honored to, that God asked me to take the steps. Don't get me wrong. I'm scared. I'm investing all this time, money, and energy. And like, there's a global pandemic. This is insane that we're trying to launch this thing, but that's over here that my spirit is telling me, go, go, go. just yeah. keep going. Don't look at all this stuff. Just keep going. And so I believe God, it, that this is going to be a movement of God in the community of women. Like we've never seen, mm-hmm. like what he's telling me is that women are going to be the catalyst for a global shift, a global shift right now. And it's happening now. And so I believe he's going to use what we're doing at Girl Power Alliance to be, to be part of that fuel. Yeah, we so agree with that because, and it's so cool that you are in this space helping to bring us all together because it has been something on my heart and my mind for so long but I believe you are the person because you have that experience. You have that, like I was reading and doing, or I was listening to something this morning too, that was about provision versus purpose. And our big goal is to help women because women like us and how you mentioned, we do get kind of stuck in our self-worth and I didn't get caught up in our company so much or products or whatever, or rank and, um, or just whatever else you have going on in your life. It can be easy to get wrapped up in that and you kind of lose a part of yourself And so it was very much put on our hearts that like, we need to get back to our foundation and back to our core of like who God has created us to be and find the purpose within that. And I feel like God has all those other things that you did before, and even with your podcast and everything you built up has been the provision that has allowed you to step into your ultimate purpose and calling, if that makes sense to you. I just, that's what I feel. Thank you. I feel the same thing. And and here's like the, this over like whelming message that I keep hearing God say to me to keep saying out loud. Like when you look at, there's so much like self-help out there, right? There's books, there's courses, there's coaches and whatever, all these people doing all this stuff. And they, and they, a lot of the stuff that they say is truth, right? But it, but it's like just off. It's just off. People say like the universe or they'll say my intuition. Well, what do we know? That's God and the Holy Spirit. Like we know that. So part of what he has emboldened me to want to do is to take, take back that. <laughs> Let's take it back. That's, we know where that comes from and we know who created it and what all that is, number one. But number two, in a world where it's very, very easy to, first of all, lose yourself. Just, I mean, I've experienced it more than once. You're talking about the same thing. Both of you obviously have experienced it to one degree or another. So it's easy to lose yourself just because of the world. It's easy to hide yourself behind what you think people want to see or hear in the social media world. And like always trying to figure out your lane, your, who are you? What is my purpose? What is this? Here's what I believe. This is what my course is going to be on. Here's what I believe wholeheartedly. Our actual superpower, we have many, but our actual superpower is when we wholly, fully, transparently, courageously are ourselves. That's where the superpower is. When you can, like for me, my most real self is when I'm talking about Jesus. That's like the most real I can get. That's where all of every, that's the wellspring that everything else out of me flows. So when I'm there, there's something different about my energy, who I am, how other people receive it. So if you can be wholly yourself just first, then if you could figure out and actually take steps on the direction God's pointing you to, you, you're, you're an actual superpower now. Now you're a soup, you are walking in something supernatural that is just going to, you're just going to float down the river because God's handling it. And so I want to help more women do that. And it's not just me listening to these stories. I'm sure it happens for you guys on the podcast. Are you like, I'm changing when I hear the stories and the power of what God's doing in all these different women's lives all around the world, all the different stories, it's changing me. So let's put more stories out there. Right. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. I'm like, just keep, you could just keep preaching, but yes, that's so, I love that you said that. And it's like, I just feel God has totally called this, all of these, all of us into this space. And the fact that brain are so grateful and appreciative that we can help be contributors to GPA 
um, and excited to see that launching in June, like you said, with um, <laughs> God still calls that to launch in June, which I think it will with everything that you've been putting on and doing behind the scenes. Um, and so a lot of exciting things that women can be expecting out of this group, out of this movement. Um, and I just can't wait for more and more people to be able to just benefit and um, be a part of that because that was really how, you know, our Victorious Entrepreneurs Rising got started. It was like, we were missing that faith aspect in the network marketing space and like knowing that you can go to someone who's coming at it from yes. those, you know, Christ-centered principles um, was so huge. So we are grateful to you and what you are doing and just so um, appreciative that we were a part of that. So just to kind of wrap up, um, can you give any lasting advice that you would have for maybe newer entrepreneurs or those who are kind of relaunching and kind of figuring either in that spot too of kind of figuring out who they are um, any lasting things that you could share with them yeah for sure um, first of all I have found over the years that the only way to turn up the voice of God is first of all you have to turn other things down um, so sometimes that means maybe you have to get off social media maybe the amount of social media you have to get off of maybe you have to take people out of your life doesn't mean forever. Sometimes, mm -hmm. sometimes, you know, you have to like clear a space. Maybe um, that might mean that you have to make changes, which scares people. But sometimes it is, I mean, sometimes it could be even a spouse. Do you know what I mean? Like, so you have to, you have to clear a space, turn things down. And then what I, here's what I learned about actually turning up the voice of God is the minute that I felt like he was is this you? Like, are you, are you telling me to do this? Are you suggesting this? That it wasn't until I actually took action. Like I did something mm -hmm. to toward that voice that it got louder. So maybe you ever get this thing where you're like, Oh, like you're thinking about something you haven't thought about in a long time. I feel like that's the Holy spirit telling you there's a reason that you're thinking about that person. So instead of just thinking it, reach out make a phone call, send a text. And so I found that as you actually take action steps on the voice that you aren't sure, you think May maybe this is you, God, the voice gets louder because it is the Holy Spirit and he always is speaking to us. Sometimes people just don't recognize it. They just don't recognize it because they don't trust themselves. They don't trust the voice, but the more you take action on it. So that as an entrepreneur, that I think is where you start. If you're starting your journey, I would say, you know, uh, be intentional about prayer. Um, I find also that writing things down. So if you're like, I think God's calling me to do this, start writing a journal with those things in there. Because when you look at them, you know, that's an action, writing it down. And then when you go back and you read through them, you can get confirmation and you get this, like, we're, we're spirit beings. Mm -hmm. So your body will respond. We talk about getting chills and all these different things. Like your body feels things. So if you write something down that you think that God is maybe calling you to or, or asking you, and then you go back and you look at it a week later that you wrote it down, I feel like it's like, you know, I say, I say it like it comes in 3d. It's like, it just stands out. You ever read the Bible and the, like a word or a verse, just like, it's like literally 3d. That's his way of saying, okay, pay attention to this. And so I think that's the first step. And then, um, I think, uh, engaging somebody in your circle that you can trust and that can pray with and for you. And that is good godly counsel. That, that, that would be um, my, my first place. And so what you guys are doing with Victorious Entrepreneurs Rising, did I say it right? I hope I did, um, is, is exactly that. You are creating a space for women to get godly counsel, to be encouraged, to be prayed with and for, and um, you know, allowing women the opportunity to um, you know, iron sharpens iron to, to shed off some of the stuff that, that we get on us just because of life. So I'm so grateful for what you're doing. And, you know, I hope to put a megaphone on your voice. That's what I want to do for you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Michelle. This has been a blessing for me and I'm sure for Natalie as well. Um, so as we wrap up, can you just let us know how people can find you and become a member of GPA? Yes. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's so exciting to me to even hear those words come out of your mouth. So um, you can go to girlpoweralliance.com and um, the wait list is right there at the top. Here's why you want to get on the wait list because for a week from May 24th to May 31st, um, we are going to have founding member pricing. So that's, you know, 
you'll get the best price ever. Um, you can find us on Instagram, Girl Power Alliance. You can subscribe to our YouTube. Everything's Girl Power Alliance. <laughs> and I'm on Instagram. My handle is Teen Mom to Millionaire. And I was thinking that that's probably not my identity anymore. And I'm going to have to change that. So that's, that's probably coming soon, but I've branded that to so many things. I don't know what to do. So God's like pushing on me. Yeah. It's time for you to change that, but that's where I am for now. And, um, I just want to again, say thank you for having me. Thank you so much. And yeah, we'll have those links in the description of the podcast as well. So people can click on those and find you easier. So thank you so much, Michelle. Thanks. Yes, thank you. It was awesome. All right. We can't wait to talk to you soon again. Rise Your Purpose will be a weekly podcast. Our hope is to inspire and educate you on your entrepreneurial journey to help you fuel your passions, live your purpose, and build a business that works for you. You can subscribe, rate, and comment on any podcast app. We'd love to hear from you. It makes us so happy to see you tuning in to the show. So if you're on Instagram, let us know what your favorite part of the show was by taking a screenshot of the episode you tuned into and tag us at Live Victorious on your story. Let us know what your favorite quote or takeaway from the episode was so that we can be inspired to keep creating content like this for you. To learn more about us and get involved with our community of mission-driven entrepreneurs, join our Facebook group, Purpose Partners, where we partner together in faith and business. So until next time, build a business that works for you and stay in alignment with your mission.